identity and security, I'm going to run through our identity services, built-in user repository, how we would configure OAuth or SAML or Active Directory, SAP Social, however you want to log into your app, and then how we secure access to APIs based on your login, and, and then roughly how we manage the identity tokens. But that's a little behind the scenes. So here's a picture of how it works. Mobile Fabric is in the middle, and we have an identity manager where you configure your identity services. And when you talk to these back-end systems, they're going to give you back their security token, which could be various different formats. But we're going to give a mobile fabric token to the client. And we'll hold that back-end security token in the middle. So if you connect to, say, Salesforce and get their security token, we hold that and give you a mobile fabric token. And then when you call a Salesforce API, we'll add the Salesforce security token in at the right place and send that back. So it's important for us to maintain those back-end security tokens in the middle when possible. There is an API if you want to pull them onto the client, but you have to explicitly do that so you kind of know what you're doing from a security perspective. We want to add security to our news and weather app, and we're going to start by using the built-in user repository. So it's as simple as going to build an identity service, use the user repository, create a user, and then go through and mark all of our services as, uh, as protected now. So on the Identity tab, there's an existing identity service called Kona User Repositories. You just have to add it to your app, and then you can just start creating users right here in line. So it's a pretty basic user repository. It has all the functionality that, that most folks would need if they're just going to manage their users in the middle piece. But obviously, we expect most people will be connecting to their existing enterprise uh, data store. But if you want to put users in the middle, you can. Now, once we've added an identity service, we can move all of our services Security, uh, security level, and you're going to see this several times, but they're all marked as public before, which means we'll let anyone through. We're setting them all back to authenticated app user, which means you've got to authenticate with a user ID and password to get to these APIs now. Now it's no longer going to accept it from anybody. The other option there is anonymous app user, which means you're just coming from an app, but you didn't log in, which means you have to have at least the key in secret, but you don't have to actually authenticate with a user ID and password. So we set all of our APIs back to authenticated user, and we published those changes to the runtime, and now we've secured all those APIs. And now only our specific app with the key in secret and a user that successfully authenticated through that uh, identity service, which in this case was a user repository, will now be able to get to our data. All right, I'm going to show you one example of what this looks like in the code. But as you can see, we've put a login page on our news and weather app. We're going to log in as this uh, user at Coney.com, provide our password. We're going to invoke the login service exactly how we did the integration service. We use the SDK. We invoke login. We give the name of our identity, identity service, which was uh, user store. And it's just as simple as what you see. We update our config file. But like I said, you, you, call the, uh, you invoke the identity service just like an integration service. You send user ID password. Um, as long as it's successful, then you have a token, and the SDK actually manages that token for you. Um, so you don't have to grab the token, and you don't have to inject it um, in the outgoing integration service. So right there, what he's highlighting is getting an instance of the integration object and then invoking it in the background. And then there's a callback. That was actually the integration of the, the initialization of the SDK, and then we invoke login.